Well hello dear viewers and welcome to my channel. Tonight we shall speak about tragic fate of Scara Bray, story filled with wailings of the lost souls. The city of Scarabray was founded after defeat of Exodus. This city was dedicated to the virtue of spirituality. Many great rangers hail from this city. Once this was quite a prosperous city, filled with fishermen, many people visited here. One of the reasons of prosperity of this place was Horens the Mage. He was a very kind man, and citizens of Scarabray felt safe with him around. A powerful wizard, with a kind heart, would protect them from all evil and dangers. But you can never know what is going on in mind of a man. Horans became more and more secretive. He isolated himself on an island where he practiced his spells. More and more he concentrated on the destruction spells. But isolation drove Horans into more madness and into darker magic. He came out from his isolation, raving mad, threatening and forcing citizens of Scarabray to build a tower or face the consequences. The tower they built would connect his little island to mainland of Scarabray. He implemented Blackrock into the walls to defend himself from magic. This construction would be known as the Dark Tower. In here he started experimenting even more, reviving dead and summoning ghosts. He became obsessed with immortality. He constructed a well where he trapped spirits of the dead. And finally he found something far darker, far more ancient than what anyone expected. They called him Urson, master of the arcane arts. No one was equal to him in dark arts. He was consumed with pride, overly confident in his abilities. But his body, as of any other humans, was decaying. This could not be stopped, but Urson decided that he did not need to stop decay of his body. All he needed was to keep his mind. He defied nature itself and defeated death by becoming a living dead, but not any ordinary one. He was a leech, first of its kind. Horans would follow in his footsteps by becoming a leech of Scara Bray. He began reviving even more dead and terrorizing citizens. But his actions were still manageable, so citizens tolerated him, until one day he finally crossed all lines. Love between town's blacksmith, Trent, and his wife, Rovana, was the talk of the town. Rovana was a very beautiful woman. This, unfortunately, would not escape Horence's glances. He desired her for himself. This is why he sent the undead to retrieve her to Dark Tower. In the struggle, unfortunately, she died. Of course, Horans could care less. Dead or alive, it did not really matter to him. In fact, it was better off this way. After all, he was ruler of the dead. So enslaving her and robbing her of her will made it even easier to keep her by his side. Enraged citizens started to scheme against Horans. Luckily, he was not the only powerful entity in Scarabray. World of Pagan 
was a barren, depressing place. So it was surprising to no one that two siblings, Mordra and her brother, Rinaldo, left for the search of the better world. They moved to Britannia, where Mordra settled as a healer of Skara Bray. She was extremely happy here, and even though once in a while she would visit Pagan to tell her grandson stories of Britannia, she was quite content with life in Skara Bray, and she would not let anyone ruin her new home. Being from Pagan, she herself knew arcane arts quite well. She needed two things to stop Horns, a soul cage, which blacksmith Trent happily obliged to build, for his thirst for vengeance had no boundary, he could not contain his fury anymore. The other thing was what led to the downfall of Skara Bray, the Lich's Potion. The potion was quite important, so Mordra gave the recipe to most trustworthy man of Skara Bray, its mayor, Forces. Forces delivered message to Cain, town alchemist. He told Cain to use ten times more mandrake root than recipe required. The day was quite normal. Paulette, the barmaid, was serving her customers. The owner, Markham, was his usually cheery self. Citizens were understandably anxious to get rid of their oppressor. So, a lot of customers came in to calm their nerves with a cold beverage. The day went quite quick, but when nighttime dawned, something horrifying happened. <coughs> Paulette saw fire coming out of Alchemist's shop. She wanted to flee, but fire spread so unnaturally fast, there was no way to escape. In panic, she ran into her room, but smoke soon covered everything. She could not breathe, and very soon, she fell asleep. When she woke up, all she saw left from her beloved city were ashes, burnt down buildings, and I'm dead, roaming everywhere. But there was one more thing. Paulette was no longer alive. She was a spirit, under the control of the evil leech, Horns. This destruction would not bother Horns at all. In fact, he somewhat enjoyed it. After all, it's far more fitting for Lord of the Dead to rule town of ashes filled with restless spirits than one filled with those living pests to stand in his way. But he was so proud of his realm that he wanted to share it. So he summoned an undead ferryman to bring any fool brave enough to his town of dead. So tell me, dear viewers, are you brave enough? to take a trip to Town of the Dead tonight. And shout out to my new subscribers Brun, Zachary Gross, Patricia Benjamin, Sami Torbenan, and Christian Eldred. Welcome to my channel. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. Thank you very much.